This is the Carlton Podcast. Here's your host, Tony Moclair. Hello and welcome to the Carlton Podcast. It's episode number 10. Joining me as he does uh, week in, week out, pretty much the great Mitch Robbo Robinson. Uh, thanks for having me, mate. It's good to be here again. Yet again, we're doing pretty well. Um, the views are up and about and we have a pretty big guest up today, I must say. We certainly do. I'm a bit nervous to be around here, but... Um yeah. Why? Why? Considering you, uh, he wasn't good enough to keep the chair that you are currently sitting in. He's just a bully. He's, if, he's come up prepared. He's, he's asked to be on this weekend. Um, I'm thinking I'm just a, bit, just a bit nervous, that's all. Why would you be nervous? Because he's only kicked his second career goal of all time and he did that last week. Mate, that was probably the happiest goal that I've ever like witnessed. Like The boys were just up and about. It was from a set shot. We know that Foxtel Two gave him 17. a 68% chance of getting the goal. That's pretty good probability for Jammer. Oh. He nailed it 100%. Here's Michael Jamison. G'day, Jammer. Welcome back to the podcast. Hello. First things first, talk us through that goal. Well, it'd firstly be remiss of me not to thank Mitch for warming my chair. Oh, while I'm away, okay. that's right. As the founding father and continual host of the podcast. All good right. things come to an end, though. But um, From little things, big things grow. Oh, anyway, song. goal. Not many players go into a game and double their... <laughs> Career tally. <laughs> true. So I've true. done that. Yep. I think it was game changing. Yeah. I've done that. Was it career and life changing? Was it game changing? Both. How much were we up Both. when you kicked that goal? They were coming. Oh, okay. Coming. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's against the flow. Yeah. I can't feel you now. No, it was good. Obviously, I don't get too many too many chances. And I, I mm. do weekly get into the coaches about getting a chance to get up there. So it was it was nice to Are we going to see more of the big Jamison up forward or...? Uh, I doubt it. If you saw the other work I did while I was up there, why was it? Why were you up there? I yeah, thought, what, you, I thought what, you lost. What was, I was, like, was he trying there? to run deep and get a cheap Were you on It was a uh, fair question. They just it was when Nick went off. Yeah, the, the head clash. They were quite short in their forward line, so they tried to find somewhere to hide me. You were going we, for a we sneaky. We were short on rotation, so they probably threw me. He's going for a sneaky third goal there one stage as well, weren't you, mate? I hiding, was. hiding out in the pocket. Yep. Well, there was a bit of commotion going on the other side oh, of the pocket. He got <laughs> goal sneak, Michael Jamison. <laughs> yep. um, we lost Eddie. It was uh, you're on the end of a, a pinpoint pass, weren't you? From Troy Menzel, was that no, right? No, Lockie. Oh, Lockie. Lockie Henderson. So okay. Andrew Walker was the first assist. <laughs> yeah, He's watched it a few times. Lockie Henderson was this week, <laughs> right? Last week. So uh, I've told I've told the boys any direct assist is a, yeah. a bottle of wine. So I'm oh. for two. Bottles. And if you don't drink wine, whatever you like, drink of choice. Okay, um, uh, how, draft. how is Jamo generally on promises like that, Robbo? Um, does he, does well, he follow through? Well, you know, I can't do much. He did just buy me a coffee, I think it was my, with my own money, but did you, was it? <laughs> how can you went into the change rooms? I said it was five dollars. Okay, it was five dollars in my locker, so I'll go down and check after this, but okay. he did bring me a coffee, which is pretty uh, good. An Asada certified coffee, <laughs> we should point out. Yeah, uh, so Jamo, that is very exciting. We uh, Hopefully that goal will one day make the Great 25 moments of the yes. Carlton Football Club, which we will moments. discuss It'll be the, shortly. If it's not in there, it's certainly the 26th. Uh, now, how's the week been for both of you? I'll go to you first, Robbo. Uh, it was uh, very good. We, um, As we said, we came off a good win last week and it always makes a, you know, we had a break obviously, so it made it, it made it a bit more refreshing and in the head I felt I could relax a little bit more. So, um, yeah, I got away. I went up to Adelaide with a, with the missus and my little son, a chancy boy. Um, and yeah. you stayed at who's house? I stayed house? at Enemy's house at the moment. Yeah, I stayed at Eddie Betts' house. So yeah. it was um, good to catch up with him and I saw a couple of my close mates up there. But um, no, I went through the bags and found some structure sheets. Good, so good. I'll be bringing that back and showing Mick. I've got a little bit of dirt in the boys. So good. So what was that little little camera a, taken yeah. out out of the briefcase? It was a paid ch- play, paid flight. So Mick, yeah, they they paid for me to go up there. Yeah. yeah. So I've got a story for you. Um, yeah, flew with Tiger. It wasn't the you know it's not the the crown of the air, but um. Well, no, it's a, it, the airline for Richmond supporters. What do you expect? Yeah, it's not the best. Yeah, so it was fifty bucks each way. Um, we got we got to uh, we got. I just woke up from a nice little sleep. You know, chance was fine on the plane. Didn't make it any cries, noise or anything yeah. like that. And then um, checked my phone and it was um nine ten. We went to get there at nine twenty. And I woke up to a, to the um, pilot going, yeah, we're going to turn around, guys. We have a technical difficulty. And the only way to fix it was um, get an engineer, which is in Melbourne. So uh. we had to fly all the way back. We did about two laps of um, Geelong while we're waiting for the air traffic to let us come down and land. Yeah. So it was disgusting first That's trip great. over there. Because when you're in a busted plane, you want to spend as much time in and the we'll, air as possible. We're sitting at about 29B as well. So my leg space was limited. So it wasn't, wasn't the best. But um, no, I've learned my lesson and... You know, I, I put it up on Twitter for about two minutes and had about ten comments saying, "Why are you, you know, on this all this money and you're flying Tiger and stuff?" So I took that down after that, and then I said, "You know what? I'm not flying with them again." It's like the Tas- that Tasmanian joke, the, the, the Tasmanian who's swimming from Tassie to, to Victoria across Bass Strait and gets yeah. three quarters of the way and gets tired, so he, he swims back. 
yes, Jambo. It's actually usually a blonde joke, but I thought yeah. I'd mix it in for. Oh, I, I, I don't mind well. it. What would a blonde be? I don't know, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's good. Works well. It's good. Jambo, how was your week been? Was it? I mean, was it a week of scheduled celebrations for the goal, or did <laughs> yeah. you? There was something on each day. No, I got out of town, and um, as Mitch said, just took the opportunity to to refresh. Um, get the body sound again, and, and more so the mind. It's good to, to get out of Melbourne and mm. get footy out of the head, and it does it does sort of feel like you know the year's almost starting again. So it's always a good feeling that we can refresh. I think we've got to buy in another you know ten or so weeks so yep. we can just can you know narrow the season down and, and attack that. All right. Well, being in the leadership group, perhaps you could give us your perspective then on the first half of the year and uh, yeah. look at the positives and the negatives. What what are the playing group taking from the from I guess the first half or so of the of the season. Yeah, probably you know learnt more lessons in the first four weeks. I think um, the biggest thing to come out was you know when we don't do things that we've been instructed to do, um, teams just hurt you too much. You know we had we went in with some uh, some game plans and some strategies, and it showed in those periods you know those games that when we did them we were we were more than competitive. But when we fell away and, and were consistent for that. The whole game, then teams just hurt you too much, you know. Especially this year, I think it's it's so even, and you can go into any game, and you know any team can beat any team. So if you're not switched on for that first, you know, the whole four quarters, um, more likely going to lose. Mm. They showed it even in the early games. We'll, you know, if it's a game of two halves, we'll be playing well. Then you know we'll we'll drop away with things that got us to in front of the you know gets mm. Adelaide. We played three good quarters, and yeah, but three of the last four was um you know some good momentum to go into you know after the bye and. We've learned some good things to come out of that and had some good young kids, I think, has probably been you know, my highlight come in. Good talent. You know, Dill yeah. Buckley's been tremendous. Troy yeah. Menzel, he's been terrific when he's been out there. So, um, yeah, those young kids you know, have been really great. Well, just um, uh, from young kids to old men of the club, I guess you could say he's Scotland announced his retirement uh, today being Thursday, uh, sorry, Tuesday. Um, your thoughts on the retirement, and just tell me about the announcement itself, Jemo. How did how did Scotto choose to make it? Yeah, it's um, it took me by surprise. He's obviously gone away over the buy and and thought about it and reconsidered where his his body was at. And he just he spoke. Well, firstly, he spoke to the playing group this morning, or I should say, he attempted to speak to us. He um, you know, Mick introduced him, and he was, he was just too emotional to even um, you know, get get a sentence out. So he. He came back this afternoon with the press conference and all the boys, you know, sat at the back and he, he spoke really, really well and he just, you know, outlined that his you know, his ankle's not at a you know, at a position where he can he can go out on the weekend and, and you know, work and play to, to the, the the high standards that he's come to expect from himself over the last sixteen years. So, you know, he's he's you know, speaking about Scott O, he's certainly the most courageous player, you know, I've ever played with and, and probably you know, in the top top handful of the hardest workers I've played with as well. So it's been a real privilege. Robbo, your thoughts on Hayes Scotland and his career and your time with him at the club? As, as uh, Gemma was saying, like he's, he's been a massive leader of the club, especially since my time I've been here. Um, didn't so much take me under his wing, but you know, kind of showed me the way of how much hard work and stuff it takes to play at the top level. And yeah, even like the days after the game, he would be the first guy like running hard in the drills and stuff and just you know shaking the cobwebs out. So he's led a lot of, a lot of the way early and... Um, no, as Gemma said, he's you know he had a great press conference where he could actually speak to us properly and without you know getting too emotional. So um, I think you know we see it on TV and stuff. He uh, spoke really well and good luck to him. I think he's going to be doing a bit of coaching. He's been been with the Vic Country coaching them in the midfield. So you know, I'd lo- you know he's one of the smartest blokes at the, in, the, in the meetings as well, as along with along, in, along with the coaches. So you know I can't wait to see him see what he does after footy and hopefully sticks around for the rest of the year and you know gives his knowledge to us. So I hope he's in the rooms and that. So. Uh, he's Scotland. Uh, it has been a remarkable career. Two hundred and sixty-eight games. The majority of them, two hundred and fifteen at Carlton. He was a twenty twelve most deserved uh, John Nichols Medal winner, and uh, in twenty eleven he was awarded Carlton Life membership. So as you say, Robbo, it would be great to see him back here at the club, uh, sharing yep. that wisdom and and uh, the knowledge that he's gained over that long and prestigious career. 16 years is a long time in footy, and he, he touched on the um, life membership as one of his you know, greatest memories of the club. So, have you got that, Jamo? Uh, technically, I've, I've got it this year, but I haven't been awarded. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully I'll get there one day too. Well, I should. You get it for the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> you do? <laughs> you do, you get, your own, yes, you get my own life I'm, membership. Yeah, that's two two years in it. Too. Just uh, that... You said, Jamo, that uh, Scotto went away over the break and would have had to confront the brutal reality that his ankle wasn't going to get much better. 
What's uh, what sort of place is that for a player to inhabit it as, he, as he's staring at the end of, you know, when you look at Scotto, the life he's known for 16 years? Uh, I can only imagine. Um, he said he, he did take solace in the fact that, you know, it is his body that has let him down and he's scraped and scraped and scraped every inch out of, you know, his career. And, you know, in the end, it was something that he couldn't really control. He's tried to get it right for two years. So, you know, he took solace in the fact that he wasn't moved on. He wasn't, you know, out of the AFL 10 years ago, it's taken a, an injury that he can't control to, to move him on and he's got 16 great years out of it. Well, we certainly appreciate it. He's been a magnificent servant Legend. of the club. And we wish uh, Heath Scotland the best in the next, uh, hopefully, very successful chapters of his life. Uh, speaking of Adelaide, Robbo, you mentioned you're over there with Eddie Betts. Yep. Um, did you get inside Eddie's head? Did you, did you, you know, did you channel Son Su, the great warrior, and basically get inside your enemy's head and destroy him from within? No, we had a couple of big nights. No, no, I'm not joking. <laughs> there's, no. A good, there's a good joke at the club about Son Su or Son Su. Um, Mick, Mick's a big history buff. Yeah. As we all know, but Mick pronounces it Son Su. Which one, is probably correct. It could be, it could be, it. but um, one day in a meeting... Mick was, was talking about opposition and, and Son Chu and he said Son Chu and, and wait, he said, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we know Wadey's Wade, uh, not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I thought that was one of his good ones. Is that why the old show got cancelled? Uh, These jokes? Or not? <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but that didn't get him in the VFL, did it? So <laughs> yeah, that's good that's on you, Mick. No, um, that's good. How, uh, okay, how are we going to beat Adelaide, Robbo? Yeah, well, um, no, as you said, I was over there, but you know, I watched the game last week because I was pretty keen on seeing how the boys go. Um, you know, the, their defensive pressure in the forward line is amazing. I think they rank third. I don't know if it's on the sheet here, but they rank third in the conference inside 50 tackles. So that's a, that's a big thing. Um, they want to keep their ball, obviously, in their forward 50 um, more than us, which is pretty obvious. But, yeah, so, you know, they've got some great players in um, Dangerfield and Thompson ran a stoppages. And big saucy Jacobs is in his um, all-Australian form again, I think. So it's, it's good to see him playing well, but hopefully not uh, the week against us. Who do you think you'll line up on? Me, yeah, I'm not playing this week. Oh, you not? I'll line up. Right I'll line up on the. I'll line up on the boundary, probably <laughs> to where the members sit. But I'll That's, be around there somewhere. How's that going? How's your? Uh, how's your your suspension going? It's going really well. Um, yeah, today we finished a pretty pretty solid session, and uh, took my boots off after running and. Big Butterfin came over and goes, Robbo, what the hell are you doing taking your boots off? And I thought, yeah, you know, I'm done for the day, so we we'll go inside. And he said, no, mate, you got you got a bit of extra running to do. So whacked the boots back on and had a bit of a six to seven minute um, running session and, you know, a bit of com- repeat efforts. But uh, that's just what I'm doing at the moment. So. so you're not breaking rocks with a chain gang or anything? You <sighs> just No, no, no. I'm just um, getting the body right and make sure I'm just, you know, playing game-like simulation during the week instead right. of this weekend. But in my head, I'll play this weekend. Okay. Robo, uh, sorry, Jamo, who do you think you will line up on? You'd have a pretty clear idea, wouldn't big, you? Big Texie uh, Walker. Yeah, most weeks I, I probably have more of an idea than this week because they've got, um, obviously, Tex is back in the team and, and Joshy Jenkins, you know, kicked four last week. Mm. But they've also got big pods as well. So there's probably three... You know, three forwards that are they're going through there that I could play on and, and probably will play on. You know, at stage this week with um, you know, big Sam Rowe and Simon White mm. down in the back line now um, and in good form. It's um, it's giving me some other big bodies down there to sort of help out. So we've been able to to rotate you know through some opposition forwards. You know, much better than in the past. It gives Jamo a chance to you know get off get off the leash and go forward and kick snags. Yeah, having those two blokes in form. Well, that's what we want. We want him to increase his career tally by 33%. Well, we could keep doubling it every week, really. Yeah. Oh, ideally, I'd double it. What's oh. it. We call it Fibonacci. Is it Fibonacci? Yeah. No, that's yeah, where it's Fib- plus. Yeah, it's called a Fibonacci. Not quite. We'll try and double it every week. By the end of the year, I'll be kicking 60 goals a game. Jeez, yeah, that, it. <laughs> and then you will be in the 25 greatest moments. <laughs> yeah. you see um, who's going to get Eddie? Um, you know what? I think the Irishman, Zach Tui, will get him. I think, um, you know, he, he, they used to train on each other here, and mm. Eddie didn't really get a sniff, so... Um, I think uh, Zaki Tui would go to him. And there's a young forward that's just starting to make his career up there is um, Charlie Cameron. And I think um, the big deal Buckley might get him. So mm. there's two two small forwards in there that um, both those boys can more than enough handle. So it would be, be a great game. I can't wait to watch it from my yeah, awesome you, view. You mentioned before, Jamo, about the, so the loss of concentration or the, the fade-outs. How is that going to be addressed against a team like Adelaide who know how to play four quarters and a very well, – they're a hard team. They – you know, they give it a they tackle hard. Nudge. They are, they are, and they're sort of a little bit hard to read as well. They were obviously fantastic against Collingwood, you know, last week, and then the week before they would have been, you know, disappointed losing to Melbourne. But um, to address your question, I think it, I think a lot have been spoken about, 
especially earlier in the year about leadership and and things like that. And I think that's I think that's the best um, you know the best way to keep you know the team t- the team focused. And I think it's you know not waiting until quarter time and half time and, and three quarter time to you know address issues. It's up to the leaders, and that's ju- not just the guys in the group. That's you know the players that have been around for a long time. You know, including guys like Mitchy who've mm-hmm. been around for six or seven years now to to make sure that you know every player is focusing because it. You know, over two hours, it is sometimes easy to switch off just for a second, and, and that's what hurts hurts you in in AFL games. So, you know, it's up for everyone just to to keep each other, you know, concentrating and and making sure we um we don't switch off at all. With so, if you see a player who, to your mind, is not uh, pulling on. his weight, not trying hard enough. Or has screwed up in front of goal, for example, is your first instinct uh, just to give them a bake or to go the opposite way and, I don't know, almost be, uh, let's say, not confrontational, but just... Constructive uh, criticism. Yeah, to give constructive criticism. What's your approach? It's a good question. And I think it it doesn't, it shouldn't depend on the player giving the feedback. It's, you know, if you're a good leader, it should depend on the player who's receiving it because you know what, you know, what's the best to get you know, certain thing, you know, reactions out of certain players. So, you know, Mitchie might, you know, respond better to a bake or a, but yeah. a young player might rather you wrap, wrap your arm around his shoulder and, and just give him a tap on the bum and, yeah. you know, come on. So it depends who it is. And often maybe sometimes what, often maybe sometimes what position <laughs> of the game, you know, if it's getting tense and you might sort of lose it a bit and, and go a bit crazy. But if you're, you know, if you're rallying, it might be a, a tap on the bum. So it depends yeah. which player and, and situation is in games. Yeah, I'll grab a glute. Often, uh, maybe sometimes. Maybe so. I think that's quite a podcast right there. Um, he, Scotland, was not shy about giving advice, was he, Robbo? Uh, no, he was, um, he was definitely one of the, the main con- contributors in the a, in a back line. I've copped a few sprays off him not getting back hard enough when he wasn't picking up his man. He was floating around there, racking up posies. And, nah, but, yeah, Scotto was a massive leader for the club and it just takes the younger players to learn from him. Like we've got, as you said, Dill Buckley and a few younger blokes in the back line. They'll um, learn from Scotto and hopefully they, they start pulling their weight and the in the talking factor, I guess, down the back. So yeah, it's what Gemma said. It's not, it's not how you give it. Sometimes it's how you like receive it and just take it on, take it on board. And what you don't want to see on TV is blokes absolutely spraying each other and going back and forth. It's, mm. you know, find the moment and you know you just bite your bite your tongue and just take it. And then if you have got something more to say, they got quarter time or half time and have your words there. But yeah, we, you know, you can see it on TV and it looks bad, but it's just how you give it, I guess. Oh, it never bothers me. I love no, it. I, lo- it I, I love means, the passion. Yeah, there's passion. And, it's passion. Yeah. But does it, does an opposition see that and think, oh, okay, we've got uh, under their skin or they're fighting amongst themselves? Is it, is it's it passion. Like uh, not, I don't think so. It's almost sometimes... Do I just say almost sometimes the opposite? Because yeah. <laughs> um, you <laughs> notice plot. with teams like, um, you know, Sydney, they're always going at each other and... You know, it just it just demonstrates that they they care and they're passionate and they and yeah. they and they want to succeed and and that's the level we're trying to get to and you know we're getting players that are coming through now like you know Dill Buckley's certainly going to be a at least a leader of this club in the future if not you know a future captain he's coming in and you know he's barking like a little Jack Russell and and that and that's great to see yeah. and that's what we need from you know every player that comes into the team. Now. Uh Dylan Buckley's dad featured in a few of the great Carlton, 25 great Carlton moments over the course of a glittering career. Uh, this week, we're counting down to the game against Adelaide where the last four of the 25 greatest Carlton moments will be revealed. You guys are actually wearing a special Guernsey this week. It's got supporters' names on the front uh, and Carlton players' names on the back. Now, is that every player who's ever played for the Carlton Football Club. Yes, it is. That's extraordinary. Yeah. So it's in pretty small lettering. Jamo, you were looking at this closely before. Why is that? Oh, because we, <laughs> they did the, the same initiative last year and they put all the players' names on. It could have been earlier this year and they'd spelt my name wrong. So what I was it? Jamison. They put an E in Jamison, as uh, you know, a lot of people do. But I, I made sure that it was all I think corrected. he sent a letter. He sent a letter... Up to the, up to the Good, hierarchy yeah. and said, look, yeah. guys, come on, I'm, I'm a leader of the club and I can't yep. be embarrassed went, like this. I went straight to the top. There's no coincidence that, you know, Sticks has been moved on. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, the new president's obviously got that right. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's an exciting thing to wear after the Heritage Round featuring the old monogram. This one actually features the monogram from the 1914-15 premierships back-to-back. Ooh. Hint, hint, guys. Yes. Uh, so um, if you had to nominate... Your greatest moment on the field wearing the Carlton jumper, what would it be, Robbo? Probably my short time in the current 
current days, I'm not going back. Mm. No, and but stuff. you wearing the number twelve. I oh, mean, doing yeah, it. Yeah, you. You're, I you're reckon my greatest moment was when I spoiled the ball over the line in uh, the Richmond final. Yep. And then I came back and kicked a snag and put us in front. So it was my worst and my best moment. <laughs> I saw my career flash between before my eyes. I thought, like, <laughs> yeah. mate, I'm, I'm I'm gone in this year. Like I knew it. <laughs> yeah. I, no, the boys came back and won for me. So. That's about, I reckon that was mine. What about you, Jamo? Not uh, apart from last week, obviously. The, yeah. Apart from the goal. Two goals. The first team. goal. <laughs> no, beating Richmond last year. Yeah. That, yeah. that win was terrific. Coming from behind uh, in front of 94. 90 plus. Probably yeah. 80 of... Whom were Richmond? 70,000 of their fans. Yeah. When we weren't expected, when we... <laughs> including when we just, sn- we just snuck in. 50 metre penalties. <laughs> That's right. And oh, they're all there, apparently. It is they're all I forget there. about that stuff. Oh, I do. I do. That's not surprising. Nah, because I'm just so awesome. I lost my SH1T over that. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, my, my poor son will never forget the facial expressions <laughs> no, Daddy yeah. pulled after the third one, especially. Anyway. Um, and, you're, okay, your, your greatest Carlton moment then that you, w- that you haven't been involved in, Gemma? Um. And don't read from the sheet. I can't go too far back, unfortunately, because I'm not a... Because you're not I a wasn't. Yeah. A, a, a cult, I was Essendon. But coincidentally, oh um, I'm sure that many, many, many fans are voting for the the Essendon The 99 loss, prelim. The 99 prelim. Yeah. So, um, It'd have to be that. There'll be many of them, I'm sure. Uh, what about but, you, Robbo, growing up? Oh, it'd have to be the... Barracking for the, the Swans. Unveiled, they include the first game, Princess Park, when the blood bath. Nah. I think my the one that I remember strongly, obviously, is Jezelinko's mark was a was an amazing one. But I yep. think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, was it Harms or Johnson that smacked in from the boundary? Yep. I reckon that, yeah. That's no, no, it was uh, Wayne Harms. Yeah, yeah Wayne. I reckon Wayne. that was the one that was just ridiculous play and it, um, turned into a goal. And I just loved, loved the desperation in it. It was just awesome. It also put a stake through Collingwood's heart, oh, which exactly. we continue yeah. to twist I hate Collingwood with a passion, so. Uh, what I love about that, that was in the old days of st- of where people could bring streamers to the ground. So if you look at the footage, <laughs> it looked the good. boundary so, line is just about covered. As, about as bad as the Seagulls now, so. Yeah. Tony yeah. is a lifelong supporter. What's yes. yours? I'd be uh, interested well, to know. 99 always comes to mind. So it's, Seventy. It's, it's funny that. We've won so many premierships and Carlton supporters. There's just a hatred of Essendon. Yeah. It's a prelim. Yeah. yeah, it's a prelim that's... Exactly. Anyway. Because that was the... In 96, they lost by a point to North Melbourne. Oh, no, to Sydney, sorry. Essendon lost to Sydney by one point. So it was just great to do that to them again. <laughs> so that was the Colton's... Psychologically break yeah. them. It was also the arrogance of Wallace to try to run yeah. past Fraser Brown with the ball and just to have, you know, Murph holding the ball at the end and... Uh, it, it was just a wonderful game. It just played out exactly like it should have. And uh, to beat the hated enemy, there was nothing Ooh. better. And get into the grand final. If you ask most Carlton supporters... We the, won that grand final. So. Well, the grand final was, was a dead rubber. That was, that yeah. was a prelim, the grand final then. Didn't so. really matter. That was There's, good um, I don't know. There's so many moments in there, Jamo. Where do you start? Where do you end? Yeah. You know, like the 2004 th- Wizard Cup. You'd remember the club's formation, so that would be, oh. that'd be up there. <laughs> <laughs> the Wizard Cup, by the way. The Wizard Cup. The boys <laughs> celebrated like it was the actual real grand final and they were well, on the bench for about to, four days. Yes, you had to back Bottom then. Bottom of the ladder that, yeah, that, that, that year, so. They were, they were grim times. <laughs> we, ended up, we ended up beating, I think it was 2004 or 2005, the team that actually went on to win the grand final. Oh, really? So it was a moral victory for Carlton. Oh, well, there we Highway go. State. Don't rub that season out then. So, um, now I did mention the uh, 24 uh, members Guernsey. The members Guernsey will feature over 1,000 uh, Carlton members' names printed on the front and on the back. Um, and the club will be auctioning off the Guernsey next week. So, if you'd like to bid, head to the Carlton website. Now, it will be the game Guernsey, so it will come off your backs and into, uh, in your case, Robbo... Uh, in the pup's office. Uh, a, a protective bag. I might buy my own. It so won't be it. washed, as far as I know. So you can literally, you can buy it. You can have the DNA of Michael Jamison. Mm. And if you are of a scientific bent, you can, when the technology permits, recreate your own Michael Jamison. Fancy that. Yeah, well, there you go. Imagine two around. Jeez. And oh, in the, the meantime, you can just take the well, he might sweat. Have a, he might have a son one day, then you can just marry him. You could do that. But in the, in the meantime, why not create your own? <laughs> and um, you can uh, well, you can have literally the sweat off Robbo's back and let no, his perspiration be your inspiration. Uh, now, we can't go without mentioning the Carlton Carnival. Oh, uh, I can't now, wait. Will you, will you guys be in attendance for this particular event? Yeah, it's I straight after it. our training session. So, right. you know, gates open at Vizzy Park from 9.45 until 11.45. And that is on this Saturday, the 24th of May. Sausage sizzles, board games, activities, self-portraits. 
get down there. Uh, but 100 Face bucks painted. at uh, Jam will be sitting down in a tent signing autographs because... That's just what he does. He doesn't get around, you know, to do face painting and all that kind of fun stuff. He just sit there and sign stuff. So if you want to get down there and see the, the amazing Michael Jamison, then come down, please. Uh, now, <coughs> the Carlton great Mill Hanna, the great number 13, 95 premiership player, he's going to be down there making a special guest appearance, talking about his time playing for the Blues and possibly uh, his time running the Fitz in Brunswick Street. He's a great man. Um, and has a... Sorry? Did he wear an afro when he was younger? He went bald very early. Oh, that one. Okay, I got yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I mixed up. Sorry? Yeah, Contogio, yeah I got mixed up. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, there's a few. There's too many Italian names for me. Um, yeah, but he uh, magnificent player in his day. God, he could play. Uh, now, if you can't make Divisi Park on Saturday, don't forget, make sure you get along to the fourth and final Carlton Carnival on Saturday the 28th of June. Uh, so now that's a, is that a required event for you guys to attend? No, we just um, it's not compulsory. We it's optional, and we like to get down there and um, show our support. So yeah, we'll be down there. That's great because it does mean a lot to the kids, especially when they see you know players such as yourselves. They get very excited until I tell them who you really now, are. Now, are we doing? <laughs> now, are we doing the? We're doing the quiz. Here we go. Now, Robbo, you this are why, coming off a hot streak. That's like why no I was other. really nervous because this bloke actually is is not too. You know, he's pretty smart. Yeah, we know. Let's that. be honest. But that, that doesn't matter. This is a game of skill. Chance, if it was street smarts, I'd win this every week. But book smarts and knowledge and stuff, I just don't. Yeah. Okay, you know the game, don't you, Jamo? Yes. It's called. Do you know your teammates, Mitch Robinson and Michael Jamison? I will read out <laughs> hints about the identity of this particular teammate of yours. And you have to tell me who that person is. Jim, First to he's win. On, he's on Google. Uh, no, he's not that. Put mobile your phone down, mate. Away, Gemma. Okay. okay. He knows the rules. Clue number one. I made my debut for Carlton during our round two clash against Gold Coast in 2011, which was the first time the two sides had ever played together. Can I guess? Yeah. Okay. Yes. He's already got it. Matthew Watson. <laughs> Far out. This bloke. <laughs> There, there is a thing called gameplay. Said, Jammer, oh, that's you know, what I you, asked this time. You, you said, you know, to, you you just can maybe draw out the suspense a that, bit. Well, <laughs> ask harder questions. Oh, I knew I wouldn't even get a Robert. chance with this bloke. Yes, it is. That's Matthew Watson. Can I go through? Too. Can I go through some of the other? You could have talked about like he has an uncle that plays played for Essendon, and I'd be like, oh, mate, what a. Yeah, or yeah, he his relative a, was the sidekick of Sherlock Holmes or something. Or just something. Okay, recruited by the Blues Selection 18 in the 2010 National Draft. Well, why didn't you said he had us, a massive head of... You're his official biographer. Thanks very much. Yeah. How is the shoulder, by the way, Jammer? You, you Shoulders gen- are locked and loaded. Yep. Okay, yep. all good. And so your body's in. Your body's right. The back's good. Everything's good. Is this going somewhere? No, no I was going to say locked and loaded. We just, we just need to know you're all okay. You need okay. license no, those guns, great. mate. Body's great. Okay, great. Well, look, that's it. Yeah, well, that just kind of ruined my afternoon, but, you know, thanks for coming up, Jammer. Yeah. <laughs> Jamo, it's been a delight to have you back, as always. You're always welcome. Thanks for having me. I, do you, really I mean, do you consider it. yourself a permanent member of the podcast? Do you just kind of... Yeah. yeah. As much as I talk, you know, smack about Jamo, you know, he, he, he led the way early on, and I don't think the podcast would be where it is today if it wasn't for, for no him. No doubt. Right. Okay. You know, I just got to respect the elders sometimes, but yeah. um, <laughs> definitely elders. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jamo. Lovely to have you back Thanks in the, the copy, co-host chair. But you were in the guest chair today, and you perform with aplomb in either. Thank you very much for having me, Mitch. I know it's it's always tough to open the door, but I appreciate it. No worries. Well, good luck against Adelaide. Thank you. Good luck with your suspension, Robbo. Thank you. And we will catch you next week on the podcast. I've been Tony McLean.